Hello and welcome to this video in which we introduce one model for friction and do a simple computation showing how this model works. So um, hopefully you already understand the idea behind friction. The idea is that you, like this uh, man here, uh, push on something and rather than just beginning to move, um, there's some force that resists your push and this force is friction. So in this uh, video, we'll consider what's called the Coulomb model of friction. Uh, and the idea is that the maximum opposing force that can be uh, due to friction, or that can occur due to friction, is proportional to the force that the surface that your object is resting on um, uh, uh, acts on your block. So. Um, in, in symbols, the idea is if my if I have a block here with a certain weight, the ground will push up against the block with a normal force, and the maximum force that uh, I can have with friction is some number mu times the magnitude of the normal force. And um, if this opposing force, this is the maximum opposing force the friction will have. So for example, if this man here is pushing with 50 pounds and the maximum opposing force that I could have is 30 pounds, then the block will start to move because the friction is not you know, opposing, um, is not entirely opposing the force that he's applying. But if he's applying a force of 50 pounds and the maximum force that friction can apply is 100 pounds, the block will not move. Now, the fact that the block doesn't move, you need to be a little careful when you're dealing with friction. This is the maximum opposing force you can have. Uh, friction is not going to start moving the block in the direction opposite of the force. So, for example, the man is pushing this direction with 50 pounds friction's not going to push this direction with 100 pounds and start the block moving towards the man, even though he's pushing on it. Uh, at least uh, that happens in, in like horror movies, but it doesn't happen in the real world. Okay, so when we're dealing with friction, we're dealing with computing the maximum force that can be applied to oppose a particular, or movement in a particular direction. This mu, is the coefficient of friction, and it's a measure of how sticky, in some sense, the uh, two surfaces are. So um, the coefficient of friction depends on the materials, and it depends on how they're finished. So for example, if I have, uh, say, a wooden surface that's pretty smooth and a plastic block on top of it, I might have a low coefficient of friction. If, on the other hand, my surface on top of it is very rough, say uh, very roughly finished cement, and my block is made out of rubber, I may have a very high coefficient of friction. Okay. Um, now, a couple things before we actually do an example. Uh, this model is, um, the accuracy can vary quite dramatically. And uh, sometimes you're lucky if this model gets you to within about 50% of the actual opposing frictional force. Other times, if you know the surface as well and perhaps you've experimentally characterized them, uh, this may be a fairly accurate model. Um, another thing that you see done quite often is that you'll see two frictional coefficients. You'll see a mu sub s, which is a static uh, coefficient of friction. This is the coefficient of friction that you have if an object is at rest. Uh, it turns out that you can also have a different co coefficient of friction, which is called a dynamic coefficient of friction. Uh, most objects, once they get moving, the coefficient of friction goes down somewhat. So, um, uh, well, uh, yeah, if you get an object moving, then the amount of force you need to apply to keep it moving is somewhat lower than the amount of force that it took to originally get it moving. So sometimes you'll see people uh, distinguish between static and dynamic friction. I'm not going to do that in this video um, because uh, this is actually 
um, primarily aimed at statics. And so if you see a coefficient of friction that's not explicitly identified as a static or a dynamic coefficient, assume it's static. So let's do a simple example that will hopefully make these uh, concepts clear or clearer. So suppose I have a box and this box is resting on some hard surface and let's suppose that the box has a weight of 100 pounds and we have the man putting the force on this box, this F. So we know that the box, to keep the box from sinking through the floor, the floor is going to apply a force to the box, which we'll call N. This is the normal force. And in addition, unless this is a frictionless interface, which usually it isn't, um, we will have some force opposing this force, which I'll call F sub F. Okay. And let's suppose that we know that the coefficient of friction, the, and in this case static, we'll assume that the box is not moving, between the surface and the box is 0.4. And so our question is, what value of F do we need in order to, to get the box to begin to move? Okay. Well, um, the way we can do this is we can find out what the maximum value of F sub F is going to be. That is, what's the maximal what's the maximum magnitude of the frictional force that will be opposing the movement. And when F is equal to that maximal force, then that's the F that if you make it just a teeny weeny bit larger, uh, the box will start to move. So uh, basically, by solving for the, f the case where uh, the F sub F, the frictional force resisting this force, is the same as this force, um, you're right on the threshold between not moving and moving. And so that gives you a value of F uh, that as soon as you get past that value of F, the box will start to move. So, um, so, so we'll do a static analysis. So we have the summation of uh, forces in the X direction. I'm sorry, let's do Y first. Is equal to zero. And in the Y direction, we have N pointing up and we have a 100 pound force pointing down which tells us that the normal force is 100 pounds. Now this tells us then that the maximum value for F sub F is going to be 0.4, which is mu, times N, which is 100 pounds. Which means that the maximum value for F sub F is going to be 40 pounds. Okay, so if this force F is larger than 40 pounds, the box will begin to move. If this force F is less than 40 pounds, the box will not begin to move. And suppose, uh, just to make it clear, suppose that we have F is 20 pounds. Okay, then the fact that the box is in static equilibrium, that it's not moving, uh, means that the sum of the forces in the X direction has to be zero. So this guy would have to equal this guy. So if this force is 20 pounds, F sub F would be 20 pounds. Now you can see that that's not equal to 0.4 times 100. Again, this is a maximum value. This is not the actual value of the frictional force, except at the point where the box is almost ready to move. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. One last concept. If you look at um, the way I've drawn this here, and I'll redraw it over here. So you have a normal force and you have a frictional force. You can think of these being the X and Y components of a, what I'll call F sub R, a reactive force, okay? Or a reaction force. And uh, basically this is the force that the ground or whatever the box is resting on is applying to the box. It consists of a force upwards that keeps the box from sinking through the surface and a force, as we've drawn it here, to the left, which keeps the box from moving. And sometimes you will see people characterize 
the coefficient of friction by this angle that you get between the force, um, the, uh, uh, oh, my mind just went blank, the reaction force, uh, the angle between the reaction force and the vertical. And so you can see that um, the uh, tangent of theta, this angle here, is going to be f sub f over n. And if we're at the case where um, f sub f is equal to mu times n, then this is mu. Okay. Or theta could be the inverse tangent of mu. And so sometimes you'll see this, uh, the coefficient of friction represented in terms of an angle. And what this is, is this is the uh, maximum angle that you can have on this reaction force. And again, if the force moving this direction is uh, smaller than uh, what you would have here, then the actual angle of the reaction force will be smaller but this is the maximum angle you can have on the reaction force. So, again, the goal has been to identify uh, friction, talk a little bit about how it works, and give you a very simple example. So, I hope this has helped.